Hello, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for dropping by. Well, ain't it been a long time? Have you missed me, guys? I know I've certainly missed you people. Um, it's been <laughs> one hell of a hectic summer, that's all I can say, uh, with one thing and another. But the worst culprit was um, my laptop is, I can say two words to you, blue and screen. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I got a total blue screen on it and I've lost everything because me being me, it was an old old laptop and I didn't even bother backing it up or anything. So it's uh, not me back weeks. But if you're watching this, we're all back up and running and uh, on with a new video, finally. Now, before we get started to the main part of the video, I just want to say a big thank you and shout out to this lovely couple here. Now, Sergey got in touch with me and uh, has re-edited one of my videos and uh, got in touch with me and said, you know, have a look at this. Can I use it for one of your, for one of his projects? And he's made it into like one of these uh, growing popular in popularity uh, short videos. Uh, so look out for that, uh, it's coming up soon. Uh, there'll be a little short that Sergey's edited. That's me knocking uh, lens caps off already. <laughs> See, nothing's changed. <laughs> and, uh, and I also want to say a big thank you to his wife too, who has retouched up the logo, uh, my logo. Uh, she's just added a little bit of shade in and uh, it really does look different. I can tell the difference and uh, thank you so much for that. So if you're watching you too, I hope you're both well and thank you uh, so much for that. You're a great work pair of you. Well, with that being said, on with today's video. Now, even though you may not think this video applies to you because maybe you don't use a, a, a optical finder or maybe your uh, finder crosshair is perfectly okay, but I can assure you it's worth learning just how easy it is to actually repair one of these uh, crosshairs in a finders. Uh, because even though you're not going to come across it every single day, you do come across it every now and then, uh, especially in the second hand market, uh, because we, with the prices of things these days, they, a lot of us are looking towards the uh, second hand market. And if the um, seller is honest enough and says he's got a broken crosshair, you can get a few, you know, a few pounds or bucks knocked off that uh, uh, because don't worry about it. The fix is really, really easy. Now, the method I'm going to show you today, I bet you you've got nearly all of these things just kicking around your house somewhere. Uh, so first, let's just talk about the materials and especially the hair itself and uh, what you're going to use for that to replace it. Now, um, let's go for the obvious one. Hair is one thing you can use. I mean, human hair. This is my preferred choice. This is what I'm going to be using today. Um, just any human hair, as long as it is, and this applies to all the um, hairs or threads that we're going to be using, as long as it's at least five inches, 130 millimeters long. Uh, you want it something like that, uh, especially with this method that I've devised to uh, to fix the crosshair. And uh, it seems a bit a little bit excessive because you only need a little tiny bit, but uh, as long as it's about 130 millimeters long, a uh, hair will just do perfect. Now, another common material to use is fishing line. Um, the really fine fishing line, the fine the, or the lightest uh, breaking strain that you can buy, the sort of uh, fishing line you'd use for coarse fishing. Again, it's a bit excessive to go and buy a full spool of fishing line uh, just for like a tiny bit needed. So it's always handy that if you are a, somebody that's into fishing, you may have got some in your fishing tackle box, or if you know somebody, it's probably a little bit uh, easier that way uh, to get some but that's another common thing you to use as a hair in your crosshair now believe it or not um, you can actually use cobwebs yes you did hear me correctly a cobweb or spider's web it's best if you use an abandoned uh, cobweb um, and you just get a few strands of that uh, of the cobweb and just spin them together if you like and you can actually use that as a as a uh, as a hair uh, for, for, for your finder. Um, I've never ever used uh, cobweb, but I know it has been done um, in, in the past. So if that's the only material you can find, I'm sure you've got a cobweb or two kicking around. I know I have. <laughs> Go and have a look in the shed somewhere. 
um, then use a cobweb. So basically anything that's fine enough, it's got to be as fine as a hair. And the other important thing it needs to be is non-fibrous. In other words, you don't want to be something that's made up of multiple strands, such as tailless cotton, just ordinary sewing cotton. Um, even though it may look thin, that is going to be way too thick. And not only is it going to be too thick, um, because you see the, the, the eyepiece itself will magnify whatever material you use. Uh, so cotton will look like rope uh, through a finder scope. And also you'll get a lot of those fibrous strands. So instead of having a nice sharp cross, you'll have a fuzzy cross, which you really don't. Don't want. Now for this method I'm going to show you, um, you're going to also need some blue tack. This is blue tack, you know, the, the putty stuff that you can stick posters up with. Uh, any kind of plasticine type blue tack will work for this. Um, you can use sticky tape. Uh, but I just find that this is a lot more easier to use. If you've got some blue tack, go and grab some of that. Now you're going to need some kind of adhesive. Now the glue I use is super glue. Um, uh, I've used that's the stuff I've used in the past and I tend to use the gel type of super glue not the, the liquidy one um, you want the gel you've got a lot more control over that um, so that's the glue you can use whatever you want um, you know use epoxy if you want but it's a little bit um, OTT uh, in my opinion super glue seems to just do it fine um, you're also going to need a pair of scissors a sharp pair of scissors uh, a little stick, a little application stick, something like a cocktail stick, a match stick, something like that, just to apply the glue, uh, apply the glue uh, because, you know, it's a little bit delicate. Um, and I think that's it. I think I've covered everything. So go and grab all that and uh, we'll get on with how to actually fix your finder. Oh, one quick note I must mention. Um, if, you, if you have got a crosshair that's actually broken in your finder, um, you, you're going to have to remove that first. Now, I'm not doing that because you may have a finder that hasn't even, you may, it just magnifies, but there's no crosshair there. Well, it's worth having a look. Uh, you'll see when I dismantle mine and having a look and see if there's actually notches cut out for a crosshair to be fitted. Uh, this does happen and this is what's happened in this particular finder scope here. Um, so I won't be having to remove the old um, hair in the finder scope. If you do, it's a simple matter of dismantling it. I'll go through dismantling it in a, <coughs> excuse me, in a minute. And uh, you can use a small file, a little craft knife, anything like that, just to dig out the old glue and, um, and hair. So I just thought I'd mention that before we get started. Uh, so anyway, let's get on with how to fix this thing. And trust me, like I say, it's a piece of cake. Don't worry. Right then, this is a little awkward to film. <laughs> I see why people, when they do these top downs, say it's so awkward to film. I see why now, especially doing fiddly things like this. But anyway, hopefully you'll get the gist of how it's done. Like I say, it's not, it's not difficult with this method I'm going to show you. Um, the first thing to do, obviously, is to remove or get to the crosshair itself. Now, depending on your eyepiece, um, on this one, um, I can't bring it too close, I'll go out of focus. Uh, you'll see that it's in two parts. Uh, there's the part here that goes in and out that does your focus. And um, sometimes this will totally screw out just, just, just as one unit. But on this one, it's slightly different. And if this is a little bit tight, this this second uh, one here, you can totally unthread it like that, and then keep doing it, and that will actually undo. And you can see that now it's like a, a, uh, a double threaded thing. There's this thread where the eyepiece goes in, and then it's also around like a washer thread. So if we keep continuing taking that out, like that, don't worry, nothing's gonna drop out or fall, or at least it shouldn't do. Um, you can see the prism down there, you may or may not be able to see the prism, there it is. Right then, we've done with that for the minute. This is the bit we want. Now, if you look closely, uh, this is where you'll find your crosshairs. Now, I need a little pointer, this'll do. Um, as you can see here, there's one, two, three, four notches. And this is where the crosshair should be. Um, and as you can see, the manufacturer just simply hasn't installed one on this. Um, so, yeah, and if yours happens to have a broken one, you may need to um, get something like a, um, a craft knife uh, or exacto knife, I think people call them these days, isn't it? and just clean, them, clean it up um, to accept the new line and glue. 
okay so this just takes a little word just take your time it should uh, clean up all right but as you can see with this one we're perfectly good to go now then what you want to do now is secure everything down it just makes every life so much easier so i've got uh and blue tax perfect for this uh we'll get some blue tack uh what should we do three four just a couple of bits like this uh be careful that you don't get it onto your lens uh even though blue tack's not too bad for um causing you know too much damage to your lens but it has got oils in it that may may uh, get onto your optics so you don't really want that uh, it's probably a good idea to cap it actually if you've got a cap cap it that's probably a better idea jason yeah so we do that and we're going to secure it now just press it down and secure that down now and now be better if i do it i'll do it nice and square like that and as you can see now that's not going anywhere and we're okay now the next step to do is to get whatever hair you're going to use well in our case we are actually using hair and get two more little blobs of blue tack and what you want to do is attach them now i don't know if the camera's showing this air up or not um i don't think i can play with the exposure it's probably a little bit overexposed but you can see that what i've done there's just a simple air attached where well, you can see it there in the shadow between these two pieces of blue tack not only this helps you locate the hair so you don't lose it it's going to help like a second hand if you get what i mean now it's just a matter of now laying there so what you want to do is secure one piece down on one side roughly on uh, opposite the slot like that and press that down and you can see why you need you know it's, it's handy to have longer pieces of air now bring it over put a little bit of tension on it and press it down firm like that and as you can see now how easy that is so even though the camera not been picking it up we've got it up there and it's going into that slot through that slot back down there and the blue tacks holding it all together and it's just a matter now of doing exactly the same thing with your other air on the other side so first of all it's always easier to just push one down to the piece of paper stretch it across like that and as you can see these are exceptionally long air in fact i'll just wind that one up a bit and then it's going to put more of a downward handle on the um on the hair so it should get that better so squeeze that in make sure it nips in into the lines a little bit of tension and do it there now i put this white piece of paper down it probably would have been better without that but uh it's just so the camera can uh, pick it up better for you um and uh, i should have probably brought the contrast down a bit but i'm sure that gives you the idea so now as you can see all the lines are um in in place and where they need to be and under tension so now it's just a simple case of getting your glue and dropping a few dabs of glue in each slot like that and then just leave it alone so what i like to do um now then i don't know if there's enough glue in here yet i uh, might have to get another one uh, there we go now uh, i don't know if i've already mentioned this but the super glue i like to use is this gel super glue um it's a lot better for when you're doing delicate work and get some on a cocktail stick like that and just dab it and drop a little piece it just gives you a little bit more control well not a cocktail stick a uh, cotton bud <laughs> in this case now be ever so careful that you don't drop super glue obviously onto your optics in any shape or form because trust me super glue does not have any forgiveness whatsoever once it's on glass it seems to be stay on glass if you do know how to remove glass uh, super glue from glass without damaging it please let me know <laughs> so we'll just put a little bit more in you want to put plenty of glue in and the best thing then is to to just leave it alone all right you do not want to touch this um give it a good time don't be being patient with it leave it overnight if need be 
Okay, and that's it folks. What I shall do now, um, I shall probably just leave that a little bit now and, put, and just build the glue up, make sure there's plenty of glue on there. Let that dry and uh, as you can see, this makes the method so much easier by just sticking it down and uh, the blue tag holding it in place. Well, I was jumping the gun a bit there. I was just uh, thought, well, it's nice and dry now. And I forgot that I was uh, supposed to be showing uh, you folks this. Um, now, I've already cut one of the airs off, as you can see. But you can see it a little bit better now I've brought the exposure down. You can see where it was running up and over. And this one's still attached. Um, and it's just a case now as, uh, of trimming them off. Um, it's best to just use scissors for this. Get as close as you can in. And there we go, folks. One repaired crosshair. Now, let's see if you can. You can. I don't know if you can see that. Actually, let's see if we can bring it up to the lens. Probably not work. I'll show you where. Oh, you can. There it is. Look. How's that for you? And as you can see now, we've got one repaired crosshair. Worked like a treat. There you go. I told you it wasn't that difficult, didn't I? Um, uh, with that little method with blue tack, it really does make the job easy. Well, that's it for another one, folks. It's so good to be back and uploading videos again. Um, I Once again, a big thank you to Sergey and his wife. There's more details below uh, for those two. And thank you for watching and being patient with me. Uh, once again, many apologies uh, for how long it's been. Now, this is the longest it's ever been, actually, uh, since I started this channel. I think the longest I've ever been in the past is about two weeks. I think it's been about six, hasn't it, since my last upload. <laughs> anyway, folks, I will see you very soon on the next one. Take good care of yourselves. Bye for now.